What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Halloween. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about Saw X. We'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer. And I will share a small tidbit on Chucky Season 3 for you guys. So starting off with Halloween. The Halloween 4 Legacy sequel that I know some of you diehard Halloween 4 fans like myself would love to see but we have another disappointing update on a possible Halloween 4 legacy sequel last month I told you guys it was unlikely that would happen because there was an alleged feud that currently existed that could have simmered down by now between Danielle and Malika Cod and that feud was coming from Danielle's remarks about her interaction with Jamie at the Halloween Ends premiere and how Jamie was rude Akkad didn't like her trying to apparently make that situation about herself because that was Jamie's night and apparently her insistence on the sequel route is annoying to him but whatever now a source way more reputable than me Cine stealth who has been right about things like freaky friday 2 the friday the 13th tv show nev's absence in scream 6 etc they've previously said that a cod was taking pitches and now they put out a tweet which i'll link below in the description saying that a cod's next halloween project is not a requel to H4 with Danielle Harris. So unfortunately, that's two strikes now for me because the chances of that happening are just sadly dwindling. I think the best bet besides doing something like that would be keeping Michael Myers, telling a whole new story that includes Dr. Loomis and new targets in Haddonfield, and maybe leaning more into Loomis being Michael's rival this time around, as opposed to how we've been leaning into Michael and Laurie give Loomis the star power as a character that many people think he has due to not only how the character was written but how Donald Pleasance portrayed that role iconically that same type of energy and that same type of uh, charisma that attracted us to, to Dr. Loomis before you can do that again find the right actor and just put him as Michael's main rival give us a trilogy of movies about Loomis going after Michael and trying to save the town of Haddonfield on the night of halloween that michael decides to escape or whatever do do what should have been done with this blumhouse trilogy but make loomis the rival instead of lord and put new kids at the center of it obviously that's the second best route i could see happening just start completely fresh and go from there now diving into scream 7 scream 7 i previously told you guys i heard that a few cooks were in the kitchen on scream 7 when it comes to the writing process i said this during a video from this past week after Landon let us know on Craven Something Scary's channel that he writes movies he's directed whether he gets credit or not. So it's not uncommon for additional writers to go uncredited, but that was a great comment to hear from Landon because it lets us now speculate on his role in the writing process for Scream 7. And it was an interesting comment to me because it backed up one of the things I was hearing, which is that there was a few co-writers who may go credited or uncredited as Landon suggested Landon being one of them I heard about other names but then Sinistelf also tweeted out the number of writers he's heard involved with Scream 7 and he put the gif of Snoop Dogg I'll leave a link to this tweet in the description as well and it's the number four so he's heard about four writers matching the number that I've had more or less if you guys remember listening from last time, I said that these names should satisfy you, but I'm still going to wait and just let this process play out before I get ahead of myself because the writers and actors strike could shift this if necessary. But one more person who, again, is way more reputable than me, Sinistealth, has heard that there are multiple writers involved with Scream 7. My only hope is that everything can blend well because at the end of the day, it's still Guy and James's script. So I imagine these other writers are guiding hands and nothing more, but Again, if there are some substantial contributions, we just don't need to have a, a thing where you have the argument, oh, there were too many cooks in the kitchen because you had too many writers attached. Obviously, four writers can end up creating something special or four writers could end up in a mismatch where things could be heading heading in one direction but then you can clearly see the influence of one writer taking it in this direction maybe won't mesh well when it comes on screen so hopefully everything works out in the writing process of scream 7 diving into saw x producer orin coles uh had some interesting comments according to saw space who has been tweeting out more of these interesting comments related to saw x stating that this is the first time in many years we've just called the movie saw it's not jigsaw or spiral it's just saw it's saw x um uh, and we bring the audience back to the beginning of Saw 
and what they fell in love with. We've been working on Saw X for almost seven years. Audiences have been telling us that they wanted a Saw film in which John Kramer was key to the action and at the story center. This is the first time you see him setting things in motion, then executing his traps. We got a clip also of the eye vacuum trap with a custodian character who has sticky fingers according to John Kramer's iconic voiceover and he needs to turn this dial to five positions to live. His other hand seems to be connected to this dial and it seems each time he turns one of the, one of the, uh, or turns the dial into one of the five positions, one of his fingers will be broken. So in true saw fashion, because I did watch the clip, it seems very frantic and reminiscent of earlier entries. The clip was about one minute and 22 seconds, I think. If you've been noticing as I was talking about this, these are newly released images from Saw X. I cannot wait to see this movie next week. I don't know if I'll actually get to see it early. I haven't had anything sent my way. If I don't get to see it early, not a problem. I'll go see it. I'll put up my review when I get to see it. Uh, jumping into The Exorcist Believer. The Exorcist Believer. Again, that film is coming out in a few short weeks. I just got my invite. I'll be seeing it on October 3rd. The embargo lifts the next day on October 4th at 11 a.m. Eastern. So I'll have my review up at 11 a.m. Eastern the day after I see it. But recently, one of you guys tagged me in an image on Twitter. And if you don't want to know any significant spoilers, click a wave. I don't really think this is that big of a deal. That's just my perspective. But again, everybody's threshold is different. One of you guys tagged me in an image of Chris McNeil laying in what I can only assume is a hospital bed or some other location where she has bandages over her eyes. So for everyone thinking that that was an hallucination from that trailer, no, it was not. She most definitely lost her eyes. And I know a lot of you who knew about this came to me and were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you were right. I was trying to tell people that they are wasting her characters, not necessarily because her eyes have been gouged. It's because of the methods behind how she ended up in this predicament. And the fact that a lot of characters who you will be able to argue once you see the movie like me are way more useful. They're being dumbed down so that Chris can have screen time. So her eyes being gouged out, th that's just another sign to me in the way that they were guys gouged out and what brought us to that moment. It's just completely a waste of her character. There was no need for Chris to be in this movie. Uh, her eyes being gouged, while that's not the sin itself, the sin itself is in what got her to that moment. And it's something that's very stupid. A lot of you have called her a stupid expert. She's not the expert that they're propping her up to be. If anything, she's an inferior expert who was written in a forceful way, while everyone else around her that you will get to meet and find out secrets about, they were far more useful, but they had to dumb them down so that Chris could have some screen time. It's a very unfortunate reality. Now, last thing I want to talk about is Chucky season three three chucky season three yes you will have references to Gigi for everyone that keeps asking me that Gigi will be referenced in these first four episodes and i will also add this the episodes themselves are around 42 minutes to 45 minutes long for those of you wondering about that but the Gigi reference i want to say is very minuscule it's not anything significant and i will also say this you will get to see cameos but temper your expectation for those cameos. They're big for certain reasons, but you'll find out what that means when you see the see the series. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video in the description. I have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews I may to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.